welcome here to Copper America 2019 once again and in today's video we are going to be taking a very close look at what we've seen so far from the tournament in terms of the group stage which is now over and of course we are also going to be taking a look a very keen interest in those quarterfinal matches. We started here with 16 teams at Copper America, now it's down to 8 and the challenge now is who can go on here from the quarterfinal stage and really make a name for themselves. There's some fantastic teams, there's brilliant players right throughout and in today's video we are going to be looking at the very best of them it's the story so far. So first and foremost guys, let's take a look through each of the three groups and how each of the teams got on in the group stage games, which lasted of course for three matches, each of them playing each other. And if we first of all start with Group A containing Brazil, Venezuela there, Peru and Bolivia, with Brazil coming out on top in that group with seven points in total. Brazil has to be said, didn't go through that group absolutely perfect. They did have there a goalless draw against Venezuela, which did leave them there with some drop points, but at the same time, they are the highest scoring team right now at Copper America with eight goals in their favour and as you'll see right there, zero in reply. Brazil are yet to concede a single goal at the tournament so far and certainly they're going through as group winners and very much deserved. In second place as well, Venezuela, a big credit to them to get that second place ahead of Peru and I think that draw against Brazil really did stand them in very good stead ahead of their game against Argentina in the quarterfinal stage. Venezuela, a good team, they've shown that through to the knockout stages. Peru finished there in third but they did go through as courtesy there of one of the best placed third place teams with Bolivia finishing bottom of the group without a single point to their name. On to Group B now then, which contains in Colombia the only team at Copa America to still maintain a 100% record. Colombia, three games, three wins in their favour, and it has to be said, that is a massive, massive achievement, given there they've been placed in a group there in Group B that is very difficult. You've got some good teams there. Argentina, certainly on their day, could be very, very difficult opponents. Paraguay, Qatar, two good sides there as well. Colombia have done very well there to get nine out of nine points, four goals in their favour, and just like Brazil, they also are yet to concede at Copper America. It's Argentina there in second place with four points, three goals scored, three goals conceded. And I think, to be honest, that goal difference there of zero tells you everything you need to know right now about Argentina. They got through to the knockout stages by the skin of their teeth just on the final game. They managed to beat Qatar. But at the same time, the knockout stages is a brand new stage. Can they now reinvent themselves? Paraguay there in third place and the second team there, along with Peru, to make it it through as part of the best place third teams. They finished on two points, which was there just slightly better than Japan, who we're going to come on to in Group C in terms of goal difference. And Qatar there finishing bottom of the group with just one point, but certainly there they are a nation on the rise. And at Copper America 2019, they did themselves very, very proud indeed with quite a few spirited displays. And finally, the final group there, Group C, saw Uruguay finish top of the group there with a final day victory over Chile by a goal to nil seven points there in the favour of Uruguay, who are pretty much perfect right throughout the campaign so far, except for a blip there against Japan, which saw them drop two points and also concede, surprisingly, two goals on the night. They've scored seven, though, with their very, very exciting duo there up front with Edinson Cavani and Luis Suarez. Seven goals in their favour and seven points for Uruguay going through there as group winners. Chile there in second place, the reigning Copa America champions, of course, in 2016 and also in 2015. They've got six points to their name and actually there for me have performed above expectations and particularly individually as we're going to come on to later. Japan there in third place and like I say on goal difference just about missed out on that third place reckoning to the knockout stages. Very very unlucky there for Japan and Ecuador finishing bottom of the group. A rather disappointing one point throw their tournament so far and there lies the group stages. All three groups finished off with Brazil and Venezuela the top two in group A, Colombia and Argentina the top two in group B and finally there in Group C, it's Uruguay and Chile, with Paraguay and Peru heading through also to the knockout stages. And before we do take a look at those games, what I want to do now is talk about the teams who've impressed me in a bit more detail and also the individual players who've really caught the eye and the imagination in those group stage matches at the Copa America so far. But if we look here at the teams and the overall quality you have impressed, you have to straight away look at Colombia. They, for me, are the team right now who've been most impressive and it's simply due to the fact they've won every 
every single game. And not only have they won those games, they've done very well. They've looked solid, they've looked organised, they've looked like a real team. They haven't conceded any goals whatsoever, and both going forward and also defensively, they look very, very solid. They won all three of their games, seeing off Argentina, a tough game there. They beat Qatar, and even against Paraguay, they rested a lot of their team to avoid suspensions, and also there to ensure maximum freshness for the knockout stages. And I think Colombia here, right here and now, they look in very, very good shape. Then, of course, there's the Group A winners and the host nation, Brazil, who you can never, ever write out. The quality they have in their team right from the start of the tournament, we believe they were one of the big, big favourites here to lift the title in their home country. But at the same time, they've had some moments here where they've been a bit shaky. The opening day against Bolivia, they didn't really convince in that win there. And also, of course, against Venezuela, when they simply could not break them down there in the nil-nil draw. But at the same time, that final group match there, the 5-0 victory over Peru, that there captures the imagination. That there is a sign that Brazil are starting to get things going. They're starting to work as a team now and lock those attacking talents. Because that's the big question right now. Brazil, as a team, have the quality, but Tite as coach has to really unlock that attacking side, the attacking quality in that Brazilian side. And certainly there, that 5-0 win over Peru, that will stand them in really good stead. Confidence is high. And finally, the other group winner, of course, in Group C, Uruguay. Certainly, like I say, they've been solid, they've been good. You're always going to look at them. You think they've got quality players. They've got Cavani, they've got Suarez, they've got a number of players right throughout their team who can make a difference, particularly in the final third. And again, you look at them going into the knockout stages, the experience as well. That's a really important thing here, both in terms of their players and also the coach, Oscar Tabarez. They've got massive experience in these kind of games, the most successful nation ever at Copper America. And certainly here, heading into the knockout rounds, Uruguay also are in a very, very good place. But it's not all about the teams at Copa America so far. There have been three individuals that I'm going to pick out here that have captured the imagination, certainly for me, starting there with Brazil themselves and with Everton. He has been a player, certainly, who's been really, really impressive. Somebody, of course, that wouldn't be recognised by every single person watching Copa America this summer. But at the same time, you certainly go away now knowing the name of Everton because he's been so good. Some brilliant goals, some fantastic individual magic as well. He's a really, really good player on the ball. Certainly, he has an eye for goal. And we We've seen that so far in his two goals at Copper America so far, which does make him the joint top goal scorer at this summer's tournament. He scored on the opening day against Bolivia and also again against Peru. And the man who currently plays his football in Brazil with Grêmio is certainly going to be having, I feel, some big, big offers going his way from clubs around Europe this summer. Then to two players who certainly are more widely known than Everton is, because starting here with James Rodriguez from Colombia, because obviously James is a player that we know has a lot of quality. We've seen that since the 2014 World Cup and even before that he was somebody who was always arriving on the big stage with a bit of genius with a bit of magic but at the same time with his future right now at club level pretty much unknown he's left Bayern Munich he doesn't know what his future lies at Real Madrid he's probably going to move on at the same time we didn't really know what kind of Hammers would appear here at Copper America 2019 for his country and I have to say he has really stepped up Colombia the most impressive team and for me Hammers is the driving heart of that he's the soul in that midfield he can get forward as well he can play in more advanced areas and I think right throughout the park the pick of his passes of course would have to be that phenomenal cross field pass to Roger Martinez against Argentina in a vital moment of the game he was there unlocking that Argentina defence unlocking there that beautiful ball that went cross field that opened up the entire pitch and for me Rodriguez a massive part of this Colombia side and he's been very very good at this summer's tournament and finally here another widely known player but at the same time somebody I didn't expect to be talking about at Copper America 2019, and that right there is Alexis Sanchez, somebody who for his country over the past few seasons, in their last two wins of course, at Copper America has been instrumental. But at the same time here, he's coming off the back of a season at Manchester United where it has been a disaster. Injury problems, bad form, out of the team, he's had it all this season. And coming into this tournament, I really didn't expect much from Alexis Sanchez. And the problem with Chile is, they really do rely on these kind of players. Certainly with Sanchez, they were hoping for something special, they were hoping that he would get it together for his country and I have to say he's done exactly that. Also for Sanchez two goals in the tournament so far scoring first and foremost against Japan and then scoring a really crucial goal the winning goal against Ecuador in Chile's 2-1 win there and certainly Sanchez when he's needed it most, when he really needed to step up, when he needed to arrive for his country he has done that here against all the odds after a bad season how's he going to perform now in the knockout stages that right there 
should be fascinating. And of course, it is going to be those knockout stage matches that we are going to be focusing on right now. In the quarterfinals, we are going to have the following games. Brazil against Paraguay. Winners there of Group A coming up against the team there who finished third in Group B, which of course sees Brazil going into that game as big, big favourites. But in these kind of games, in knockout matches, one-off ties, you absolutely never know. Then later on, Friday evening, Venezuela, who finished second in Group A, coming Coming up against Argentina, the team of course who finished second there in Group B to Colombia, Argentina with a big task on their hands, they cannot afford to take Venezuela lightly, it's going to be a tough game, no doubt about that. Venezuela showed their quality against Brazil and certainly Argentina are going to have to be at their best here to get through that one, then later on, on that Friday night, it's Colombia against Chile and that for me right there is probably the match of the round. Colombia who've been in sensational form so far, three wins out of three, coming up against the reigning champions, the reigning two-time champion in Chile. A massive game, two colossal footballing nations, so much quality there out on the field. That one should be a cracker. And then on Saturday night, the final quarter-final match, it's Uruguay against Peru. Winners there of Group C in Uruguay coming up against the third-place team from Group A. And that there completes the quarter-finals. Brazil, Paraguay, Venezuela, Argentina, Colombia and Chile. And and Uruguay against Peru. There's so much still to look forward to at Copper America. And certainly right here, I'm going to keep you posted. You can count on that. So please leave your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. What have you made of Copper America so far? Who has impressed you as a team? Who has impressed you as individuals? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, I want to know your thoughts with regard to those massive knockout stage matches. What do you see happening in the quarterfinals? I will see you soon for those exciting games. But until next time, as always, it's Copper America!